Welcome back to the line. Riding on the coattails of correspondent Laura Pascas. Last two segments, we're going to stick with an environmental topic. Now, on July 3rd, the Carlsbad City Council approved a resolution to support Holtec International's proposed nuclear, nuclear waste repository. The resolution was approved unanimously, by the way, despite opposition from the governor, the land commissioner, and the New Mexico congressional delegation over environmental concerns. Now, supporters say the repository will generate jobs and revenue, and the waste has to be stored somewhere, Crystal. And I, I, I use that tone of voice purposely mm -hmm. because we are right back here at the very crux of how New Mexico works sometimes for economic development. We're talking about jobs and income versus environmental needs mm -hmm. and trying to balance those two things. Absolutely. It's a difficulty. Oh, it always is really difficult, especially, mm -hmm. you know, it, the economic, uh, economic development versus uh, nature rights argument. You know, and I, I had to ask a couple people like that had been that had been involved, certain industries that were involved, like even with the WIP plant, right. um, you know, and, and the environmental department, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I find really interesting is that it's always a lack of education, right? It's always a lack of understanding and communication that gets people into these situations. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you start to see whole tech really just it, majorly influencing um, Carlsbad. Um, Holtec was uh, never uh, received support from Las Cruces right. um, for, and because of those um, industries. And it's almost as if rather than education, Holtec is actually using bullying tactics mm -hmm. to better um, inform the public about the, the resources and the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. um, and even the oil and gas industry is just stepping away from it. They're just like, we're not even touching the subject because mm -hmm. uh, we, we are educated enough to know the impact of it, but mm -hmm. we're just totally staying away from the, the, um, the uh, situation. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, in, in this particular instance, it's, it's definitely, um, uh, it's curious to see how Holtec can actually educate the community. Um, on a subject matter like this, on how it can actually impact, you know, uh, the land commissioner saying they don't present viable evidence that shows that it can be properly contained. Right. Then it makes sure Holtec educates us on how it's properly right. contained. Let me, let me continue that thought with uh, Steph, the land commissioner I mentioned, uh, Stephanie Garcia Richard. I'm going to quote here Holtec has only provided bits and pieces of information, and what they have provided has been incomplete and at times misleading. Absolutely. Is that a red flag? I mean, it it's sounds a like a red flag. flag. I mean, it's yeah. a huge red flag when the only stakeholder you have saying that this is safe right it is the one that's going to be benefiting from it of course it's a red flag when we don't have a very clear picture of what transportation looks like of this nuclear mm -hmm. nuclear waste how mm -hmm. it being located in the middle of oil and gas mining country right. is going to impact it when we don't have um, you know, any of those economic feasibility studies, is it really going to create jobs? Do we know that for a fact? You know, of course they're going to say it is sure. because mm -hmm. for the reasons that you all outlined just two sure. seconds ago. That's and right. so, you know, I'm also very concerned. How do we trust the word of Holtec when it's already been discovered mm -hmm. that they falsely claim to have secured agreements with members of the mm -hmm. oil and gas industry? And very, very clearly they haven't. So mm -hmm. I think they're lacking in credibility. And so the efforts that they have um, done so far and that they do moving forward to better educate the community are going to probably fall on deaf ears. Let me ask you this though, the, the Land Commissioner Merritt also mentioned that she's concerned about fracking beneath a nuclear storage site. Right. Seems like a reasonable fear to me and she's looking for more studies and doesn't want New Mexico to be a guinea pig for these kind of studies. That seems reasonable, doesn't it? I just, you know. What, uh, what I find notable um, mm -hmm. about both the Governor's letter and the Land Commissioner's letter Please. is they sent out a press release describing their letters, but we haven't seen the actual letters. Uh, so I don't know what studies they have. I don't know what, Fair I enough. don't know the yep. content. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you tell me um, fracking, nuclear waste storage, yeah, I think, I think that's potentially a really, uh, really bad idea. Mm -hmm. However, Holtec has, complete, has been, is go, been ongoing a multi-year um, approval process through the Nuclear Regula Regulatory Commission. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the federal government agency. That's right. If you go to nrc.gov, there are thousands of pages of their documentation. Mm -hmm. um, and I did look and I did word searches very quickly and I did not see a single reference to fracking. Okay. So I think this may be just a gap that no one's thought of. Gotcha. But then I looked, okay, what in New Mexico do we have to address this? We don't. Mm -hmm. We don't have an office to manage nuclear storage. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, we have some um, ad hoc organizations, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, it hurts me to say this as a Republican, but if we're going to have a, an executive branch that's totally willing to spend money on more government jobs, why don't we create this office and hire mm -hmm. hire the right people mm -hmm. and the right consultants to look into this? Maybe you're really a Democrat. 
No. no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you didn't get me lynched. Uh, <laughs> um, um, and, and I think, you know, all, all communications are political, obviously. Yeah. And I no think doubt. we have a clear lack of trust between the Department of the Interior and this administration and our current executive branch in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I think we may have gone out a little too fast with the letters, and I feel okay. like this is a political move more than anything that's going to stop this. Right. I, don't, I don't see... I, I don't see necessarily the value add, except for some getting some political capital. You know, on Merritt's point there, uh, the governor called it malpractice. Yeah. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Pretty strong words. Is, she, is, is, she, is she? Right. Uh, thank you. That was my question. Economic, thank you. You're brilliant. Yeah. What does that mean necessarily? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a hard thing. Well, yeah. uh, and I'm thinking. I'm looking at this from the mayor of Carlsbad's point of view. Right, do, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah. looking at this, going, okay, the, our governor's not into this, but I'm, I'm hearing whole tech here. I'm not feeling a problem here. Mm -hmm. Why is she calling this thing malpractice? You know what I mean? Well, there's a different sorts of stakeholders that we mm -hmm. have to uh, think about. So we've been talking as if the uh, waste is just going to get there magically, you know, like an apparition or something mm -hmm. like, like that. It's got to be transported. Right. Uh, so you've got a whole set of issues there. And this would be mm -hmm. true in every single uh, place where there's a discussion of whether or not uh, you're going to be hosting nuclear storage. Right. There is uh, the sense that this is going to be temporary, but we know from Yucca Mountain uh, in Nevada that it takes decades and decades to get That's anything right. you know up and uh, going. And so when there is a lack of trust, and nobody wants this mm -hmm. um, in their uh, backyard, this is the fundamental problem right. of nuclear power. Everybody agrees that we need a permanent place to have this waste. Everybody agrees that there's no place in their state that could possibly hold, host this. That's right. That's right. You know, Crystal, the idea that um, it's 15 miles from WIP. In the idea that you know we're, we do have studies that show fracking does cause these crazy little earthquakes and stuff, does that concern you? I mean, 50 miles sounds short, but it could be long. We don't know yeah. geographically, you know, what that actually means. Of course, but. it's really concerning that yeah. a new industry that deals with nuclear, uh, nuclear radioactive waste, like. Right. Of course that's a little scary, right? Like how is that really going to genuinely impact the community and the community that's there? Mm -hmm. And and I, I question if whether or not Carlsbad is truly looking at this from the smartest economic development lens, right? Mm -hmm. Do they really want to attract more of these uh, initial waste sites um, to that area? Um, is it really going to be the new town to make sure that it's literally just a dump? Um, you know, Carlsbad has a lot more to give, and they even say, like, oh, this could possibly pollute and, and ruin Carlsbad Caverns and, mm -hmm. you know, the greatest, the, the, the great nature that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if this is their economic development strategy, I just really question it at, at the mm -hmm. end of the day because, um, you know, I was looking at the numbers. Yes, 215 jobs paying $70,000 a year with a uh, $2.4 billion capital investment. It's hard to say no to that. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, obviously working more collaboratively with Wait, their local leaders. Can you, can you blame leaders, should someone, again, I'm looking at this from the point of view of the mayor here, uh, it's a 40-year contract. Mm -hmm. Those things don't come around very often no, in a place like Carlsbad. Yeah, it doesn't, absolutely, you but know? 40 years is 40 years. Right. The land, and at the expense of what? At right. the expense of what, okay. and also, like, how long is this town going to be prospering for and the right. nature around it and, okay. and, the, and the minerals and, and the land? That right. should absolutely be lasting a lifetime, not just Indefinitely. 40 years. Gotcha. More than a lifetime, gotcha. for the lifetime of a life. Do you have a point on that, Harry? I saw yeah, you well, and yeah. Uh, going back to Stephanie's a point about the uh, jobs. Uh, so are these jobs going to be for local people you know, in southern New Mexico? Uh, or are they going to be brought in uh, from the outside? And we've had these, right. these discussions before mm -hmm. in the context of these uh, big sorts of uh, projects. So come what's from Virginia. The, that's, yeah. that's, that is the <laughs> nuclear technology yeah. hub. Well, and and going, the universities yeah. are teaching yeah. to it. They'll come from Yeah, nuclear. and going to your point, I mean, we that's really right. don't have you know, a lot of you know, nuclear you know, in the estate for uh, pretty obvious uh, reasons. So mm -hmm. it's not only got to be of a uh, you know, benefit you know, uh, it, for the community, it's really got to benefit local people and really drive economic development. That's a good last note there, too, as well. Next, we take you up to Santa Fe for the massive volunteer effort behind this weekend's folk art market. We'll discuss trouble for another Santa Fe attraction, Meow Wolf, after that.